Nelly. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to a jam-packed <laughs> Raw recap here on the Pro Wrestling Sheet. So much to talk about. So much tweets going on this weekend. Elimination Chamber. Uh, China DX. All kinds of stuff to talk about, but... Of course, this is the Royal Recap. That's Focus. I'm your host, John Roca, joined, as always, by the CEO of the Pro Wrestling Sheet, my man, Ryan Satin, who I love to follow during pay-per-view weekends. You're my favorite follow during pay-per-view weekends. Thank you. Because whatever you tweet is like the smartest tweet, <laughs> and then you have all these responses, and I get a nice flavor of what the fans are thinking. Yeah. Uh, For better or worse. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Some of those, some of those, <laughs> the one yesterday where they were, t- like, when I just, like, I, such an innocuous thing that I tweeted during the show about yeah. tag team Oh yeah, there being an influx of Texas, which we'll talk about. Yeah. But like, I just got like inundated with just like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> idiot, and like, so many like suck my dicks, like Whoa. so many of those, and I don't know if that's Already. gonna get this demonetized, but like, Yee. so many of those, and I was like. Whoa! Right. Did not I, unexpected. So yeah. yeah, I I'm glad that someone appreciates. My I do. I really do. They're the fun fun uh, follows. Um, and I, Roka woke me up with that yell right there. I was <laughs> I was not expecting that. I'm glad to see Roka's in such a good mood. Roka's gonna be gone, so That's he's like he's kind of like, why. Yeah, I was gonna say he's in a good mood here because he's gonna be on vacation for the next two weeks. Yeah, one week, eight, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Like, two till weeks until next weekend. Yeah, I'll be in London. So yeah, tomorrow we'll do the recap show with uh, with Norman. Yeah, my, writer, Norm. my my writer here for. For, for the time being, he's helping me out, so that should be fun. That'd be a good one. I'm gonna try to eat at his family's restaurant there in London, so I'm gonna I, try and do that. I like it. Yeah. So uh, this raw, um, yeah, was interesting. It was for an a interesting lot of raw. Maybe do you, okay. So do you want to talk about Elimination Chamber a little bit? Just a little bit, since people are so many people, are people are clamoring for. Our I know, I know. And I'm sorry to those of you guys. I, I want you guys to know, like, I I book as much time yeah. in here as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it would have been, we, you know, because of the holiday, nobody was here on right. Monday, right? So it would have been a little weird to book a recap show, the pay per view after the Raw recap. Would have right. made a lot of sense. Uh, so I apologize for that. And I, you know. Eventually, I will have my. I'm hoping if I keep things uh, on the up and everything keeps going the way I like it, um, I'll hopefully have my own. We'll have our own little wrestling sheet area to record things in, which means yeah. we can record whatever we want. We don't have. To, we won't have to hopefully book studio time, mm-hmm. um, so that we can do more recaps. But right now, I really only have. We're all, we have to come in early on Monday and do all the yeah. different things. And Roken does a million shows, and people don't want to necessarily come in early on Mondays. So mm-hmm. um, not. Us, but you know, yeah, so I, I feel bad for people to come in early on Monday. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we do the pay per view uh, recaps on big events. But yeah. uh, like you said, there, there was a lot of stuff happening here. Uh, what do you think about the two recap match or the two elimination chamber matches? I really enjoyed them. Actually, I was thoroughly enjoy. I enjoyed the women's recap. The tag team match was a nice swerve. I didn't anticipate that ending. As we as we, I agreed with you, talked me into it. Like I agreed with you with your analysis that you thought it was going to be Nia Jax or Tamina or one, one of the other, other than Bailey and Sasha one and. It ended up being Bailey and Sasha, so it was shocking to me. Once Nia and Tamina got eliminated, I was like, oh. They're going with Bailey and Sasha. Oh, like right. I re- they're not going to give it a fire desire. Although there were, and, and yes, we we messed up the name Fire <laughs> oh, and Desire yeah, yeah, on yeah. the recent show where it was uh, Fire Desire and what's Naomi and and Carmella? They, they have some other with, name. Yeah. Fabulous Glow. Fabulous that was Glow. Was it, right. That's it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry. I, yes, I saw all those comments. <laughs> I realized I got that messed up. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I I, I will say, though, that Sonya and Mandy did make me believe. There were a few moments where it was just those two final teams where I thought for a second, like, are they going to give it to Mandy and Sonya first? Which, you know what? Like, I like it when there's near falls and and believable near falls that I can get into. So I I, I like that. Uh, There was cool moments in the match, like Liv and Sarah both doing the cross bodies Mm -hmm. off the top of the pod. Um, I thought they acquitted themselves well. I had no negative reactions to anybody. Even the iconic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the iconics. I love when they came in and tried to pin everybody. Yeah, that and they was were, funny. That was fun. Perfect on brand for them yeah. as a team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I really, you know, my my main gripe, I'd say, is with the elimination chamber, okay. the current elimination chambers, is just like those pads, like those pads around oh, the metal or whatever. Like, yeah. It makes the match a lot less cool. Right. It's really just like a. Like it, the pods are there, yes, and you can jump off of them. Right, and you right, can throw right. someone through them, but like the brutality of the match was the metal around. Right, the, right. Am right. I crazy? I agree for that? with you. Yeah, too many pads, too many taking care of the wrestlers. In the old days, you, in the first like few brutal. elimination chambers, pretty brutal. Yeah, and I get it; it's safe or whatever. But it, it's mm-hmm. it's not as exciting of a match to me just to have like a higher thing to jump off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but. Regardless, it is cool seeing people jump off the pods. So, yeah, like, you yeah. know, it is it is fun. Um, yeah. the pod, I think the pods were out in the old Elimination Chambers, 
and then they would come like they weren't necessarily inside the cage. They were like out, and you came. And you around. came into it. I think so. I think so. And you were like I'd the have front to go door open, and then you came I out. Like through. There's been different iterations yeah, of it throughout certainly throughout time. Um, Eric yeah. Bischoff creation, by the way. No, isn't it a Chris Jericho creation? I thought it was limited. She was Eric pretty sure it's a Chris Jericho creation. Oh, you're just saying you're an AEW mark. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it a Chris Jericho thing? I'm I, pretty sure Bischoff pitched it. I, hold on, I'm looking but, this but up. Look now. It up. But look it up. Yeah, yeah. But Chamber. I hear what you're saying about the pods. I, but I still felt like everyone got the bumps that they were getting. I like that. Uh, there was a lot of slamming faces into the cages. I like enjoyed that with the women's match. Um, okay, so the Wikipedia says it was created by Triple H and introduced by Eric Bischoff. There you go. Okay, maybe it was that. I thought it was Chris Jericho. Maybe that's a different match I'm thinking of. Yeah. Whatever. Amber. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, at the end of the day, though, yeah. you know, if I were booking WWE, I would have booked Sasha and Bailey to to win the titles. Okay. Like as much as I thought that's what WWE was going to do with the right. swerve of Nia and Tamina because they've been building them up or whatever. Um, I think the right call the, the right call was to put the belts on Sasha sure. and Bailey as the first holders. Of yeah, it. yeah, I mean, if you want to have a you know uh, uh, to make a mark, mm-hmm. you give it to the one that everyone really wants. In my opinion, mm-hmm. um, I get the chase and it's fun to watch the chase or whatever. But yeah. if you're not going that direction, I mean, yeah, I. In my opinion, Sasha Bailey is the better choice regardless. There's multiple teams that people would want to see them go yeah, up against. Yeah. Um, there's there's um, a longer run yeah. there, in, in my opinion. So so I'm super into that. Um, the the actual main event, the the, the Elimination Chamber match oh, itself, yeah. uh, or the, the main event of the, mm-hmm. the men's mm-hmm. the Elimination Chamber, um, great match. Yeah. Killer match. Uh, everyone put it all on the line. Everyone killed it. Yeah. Um, I didn't really ever. I was never like not entertained. No. Um, and obviously, you know, Kofi getting as far as he did and, and and almost getting it. Like I loved, you know, like him, you know, eliminating Orton to get to the final yeah, two, yeah. Um, and then kind of squaring off. Like was great. You know, yeah. I I I don't just. In my opinion, the right call wasn't to put the belt on Kofi there. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe at WrestleMania. It's I, certainly a setup for it to happen. If it, if I were in charge, I would think that way. Absolutely. Yes, you go like, but also like, I don't know. Who you, knows? You crown your first first full black champion at WrestleMania. I would be into it. I'm me too. But I also could see them maybe male. I could also see them maybe giving it to him at Fast Lane too, and like then Daniel Bryan wins it back at WrestleMania, and just, and just testing uh, the waters, like out. dipping their toes. And if they're gonna do that, I think that's silly. Yeah, I think that's I agree. silly. It let him win it at a premier one, like elimination him, or something. Yeah. not Fast Lane. Uh, uh, I mean, elimination chamber and Fast Lane are pretty much the same. Let him win at WrestleMania. <laughs> they're both kind of because I'll be honest with you. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed the show Elimination Ooh, Chamber, okay. but it wasn't like anything that like okay. you have to go watch, right? I mean, am no, I, crazy? I I don't disagree with you, but I think it's one of the more solid pay per views that we've had from top to bottom in the last. Uh, year last last twelve months. See, I really loved Royal Rumble. I think Royal Rumble blew it out of the water. But okay. Royal Rumble, you liked Royal Rumble better. I did. Than I, did, I, did. I did. I did. Chamber. We loved Royal Rumble. We did. I'm not, dis- yeah, I'm not disputing I, that. I didn't. Really. I just like this as a solid show. It was a good show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would not say it was a bad show. Nope. I would just say that there was nothing like you had to go out of your way to see. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, it, for, for me personally, like I hate when uh, they redo matches the next night on Raw right away. Oh I mean, yeah. That, Two of those. I agree. And, and I'll complain Thoroughly. when we finally We're start get doing the that. raw yeah, recap. Yeah. But yeah. like, um, it just—I don't know. Like, I just—I didn't care about Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman during the show. Yeah. And I really didn't care about it on Raw last night. Right. So I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing that uh, was like really worth discussing from Elimination Chamber. I, I'll tell you this: I like the idea of. Uh, Corbin now teaming up with McIntyre and Lashley. I'm, but that was what they were doing when Ross sucked a few months ago, like two uh, months ago. I know, but I gotta like this feels this iteration feels better. This iter- there's something better chemistry wise that I like about these three coming together. They're missing one more person. I, Leo is there, but I don't think Leo can manage all three like as a stable. So, but they need one more person in there who's essentially the alpha dog. You have McIntyre, you have Lashley, you have Corbin, but neither one of them are. Sp- particularly spectacular on the mic. You need an alpha dog. If Heyman wasn't with Lesnar, Heyman would have been perfect. He'd be like, uh, you know, a Bobby Heenan 2.0 or whatever. You, you got to get, there's got to be somebody, somebody out there that they can put into this situation and make it like, make it a cohesive unit. You know, Cause that's a good stable. It's a bunch of dudes. I'm sure Vince has a hard on watching those three guys. Like as a, as a stable is what I'm saying. Um, I almost, and I was wondering last night. And the fans are going to hate me. I'm coming around to Corbin. The fans are going to hate me. That's fine. I was wondering last night almost if 
because I was, and we're gonna get to it. But I was almost wondering if that's what all the NXT guys were brought up for. If they're gonna do like some sort of like three on four on four of like those guys who have been fucking up Raw versus yeah. the guys on the top premier brand and the sure. company that everyone that all the smarks love. You know, or right. I don't know. It doesn't really thrill me that much. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I would say I'm on the opposite side of that. Okay. I didn't like it. I thought that it was kind of silly to pair them all back up again okay. when we just had like a thing where it was like Ross sucked when these guys were together, <laughs> and then it's like, right, oh, but he was in charge. Oh, you forgot about that, right? Yeah, well, yeah. now they're all back together again. Just don't pay pay no attention to the man behind the curtain type thing. You Nothing know, to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that I guess that was okay. my main thing with it. Um, okay. Did you like the Usos winning the title? I like the Usos winning the title. Hell yes! And I'm and I bought the shirt. So did you? I'm gonna have a bus stamp. <laughs> I'm gonna have a tramp stamp that says Usos. That shirt is a nice shirt. The gold lettering makes that shirt. So to me, I, I had to get that one. I, I thought it was a good match, and they deserved to win it. And I once again, I could not tell who was face, who was heel. Yeah, I couldn't tell. So it was an interesting situation. So when you talk to me about Ronda and Charlotte and Becky, how come it's okay in this situation, but it's not okay in that situation? So this is a little bit like I'm just trying to figure this out. Yeah, like, no, it is. The shades of is very confusing in yeah. WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was a good match. And I wonder, the Miz thing, man, they got to give him something. Dude, it's, it, they're killing him, man. That whole thing, I've got to do better for you, for my dad. I was like, what are you doing? What? This is not Miz. No. Like, what? This is just, when did he become filler? Are you going to gonna risk sending him back down again where he was before? He had to make this whole fucking climb to get yeah. to where he is now. He was golden where he was. He yeah. was like a per- Mr. Perfect of WWE. Like exactly. He was just at that position. He wasn't going anywhere. He was like Teflon in WWE. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm also not a fan of that. Right. Um, although I'm glad the tag titles are off of them. I'm hoping that yes. now at least we're going to figure out what this has all been for. Right. Whatever Vince McMahon's master plan behind this stupid freaking storyline has been. Yeah. Fi- I'm hoping that... That we're finally gonna find out. Yeah. Um, and it's funny too because I, I I totally guessed the Usos were gonna win. I didn't think their arrest was gonna matter in the slightest bit. I just didn't. I didn't think it was gonna affect. Oh, anything. what happened? They got arrested. Oh, Jimmy got arrested last week. Oh, damn it, Jimmy. Yeah. What yeah. for? Uh, disorderly conduct. Oh. You didn't read any of that? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. He. Uh, you know all the other shows I do, man. I'm trying. To- <laughs> I do try to read the wrestling sheet as much as possible, he, but I, I missed that one. He, uh, Naomi was, he and Naomi were driving, Naomi was driving. Okay. Um, they got pulled over, and okay. then uh, cops smelled alcohol in the car. They asked her to get out, and Jimmy started popping off, got out of the car, squared up with the cop. Uh, they pulled out a taser, and then, like, he chilled, but then still kind of, like, said some stuff, so apparently wow. they, they took him into custody. Okay. But I didn't think it was going to, like, I didn't think it was going to mess with the status of the company at all. They clearly right. don't care about drinking and driving arrests. It's not... It's, and he wasn't driving. That's a fair point. He wasn't driving. And he wasn't even driving yeah, and yeah. she was sober. So, yeah. um, but one thing I did find interesting was that Rikishi kind of sort of confirmed this morning that the Usos have... are not sure about what they're going to be doing in okay. the coming future. Like, even though they're tag team champions, yeah. um, he alluded to the fact that they're going to be free agents soon. That, like... Well, here's what he said. He said... Uh, let me pull it up because he obviously he was being a little tongue in cheek about it, but he said yeah. six time WWE tag team champions, uh, Jonathan Fatu and Josh Fatu. Legacy continues. There's nothing else to prove, twins. Congratulations. Your hard work in the industry will and never be denied in the WWE or anywhere else in the wrestling world. Agreed. Usos is money. Hashtag too legit to pass up on. Hashtag time's up. Hashtag soon to be free agents, Ooh. and then he said, "Or not." <laughs> uh, so I mean, clearly something is going on behind the scenes, and I I did hear that like they are right now. You know, they have not instantly resigned. Yeah, you know, they 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 have an offer on the table, but their deals I believe are up in April. Wow. Um, and there's interest, obviously. I mean, there's interest elsewhere. I would mm-hmm. imagine. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they've tweeted, you know. The, the Young Bucks and the Usos, I believe, all tweeted about how they want to wrestle each other. And, you know, so I, you know, I, the rumor mill is in full swing or whatever. But, yeah. like, obviously, they're, you know, something's going on with the Usos right now. So it didn't surprise me to see them put the tag belts on them to try and, like, hey, look at We care about tag teams now, which I think we're going to get to in yeah. Raw. But it's funny how competition changes everything. Which is why I was so surprised that everyone told me to give them blowjobs last Whoa. night Whoa. over there over by the the AEW thing because clearly wrestling fans clearly man. AEW is causing they're some changes. They're passionate I, people. I'm not like crazy for no, saying no, yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe they just don't like it being pointed out. I, I guess, but yeah. it's very clear. Like you know, 
Five-year contracts are being offered to wrestlers in WWE right now whose deals aren't even up yet. Like, they're just trying to lock them down for longer. Why? I'm just, with significant I'm, raises, too. Right. Well, there you go. Why? Yeah. Come on. AEW. That's what happens. Same thing with WWE. WCW started blowing of up. Of course. It's all it's competition. Naturally, competition breeds a better situation if you can negotiate a better situation for yourself. And some people are signing them right away. Yeah. But some people are not. Right. Some people are like, who knows what wrestling's going to be like in five years? Maybe I should think about this. Exactly. You know? So. Exactly. So this, it's not bad to have the wrestlers be in a position of power. They rarely are. They're not unionized. No. So they should be able it's to negotiate. It's great to see team. wrestlers exactly. in a position of power for once. I agree. I love it. I agree thoroughly. Uh, two things. Let's finish up Elimination Chamber. The Lacey Evans things. What the hell was the point of that? We'll talk about that on okay, Raw. Okay, okay. And then the second thing, Becky Lynch. Holy Mary, that mother of God. That was fantastic. Yeah. It was beautiful to watch. Uh, her coming in that, like I, I tweeted, the reverse Bruce Lee outfit, wearing the black with the yellow stripes and vice versa, and just kicking ass all over the place. And kudos to Charlotte for taking the hits, taking the hits, not trying to roll out that ring, uh, to, uh, not rolling out that ring. And Ronda legitimately got hit. Oh, yeah. You could tell in that. Like, she leg- she was picking up the crutch to be like, I think there was a, a moment where you're like, oh, shit. Uh, but she she held it off and did whatever she had to do. But I liked that she rolled with it. And they both were willing to take this from Becky. Becky wins this round, puts her back in that status for promotion for the WrestleMania match. So all around, a very smart booking and how it all went down. Yeah, and I feel like there are so many young boys that fell in love with Becky Lynch last night. Oh, the yeah. Lynch, she was like, whoa, that girl's a badass. She wears all leather. Right. She comes out and she's just kicking ass. Like, that was a cool look. I like the outfit. Yeah, and it made yeah, her look badass. real badass being like all leathered out. Um, and it was a very cool segment yep. all around. Becky seemed cool by limping out there and then yeah. just going ham, pretending like she could be friends with Ronda for a second and going ham on Ronda. Yeah, that was great. Great. I was like, oh shit, Ronda's going to go off of Charlotte. They're going to both beat on her up. Okay, I get it. That's how we get the WrestleMania match. They're like together, and then bam, right from behind. It was very. That was a very Stone Cold esque move. Yes, Where it Stone, was. Like back in the day, like when you would see. There's like my favorite GIF, uh, or their favorite clip. I should say GIF, but my favorite clip from when Stone Cold and like Shane, when he gives Shane the beer and they like cheer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they start drinking it, and then Stone Cold is still looking at him, whatever, and Shane just has that look on his face, and he gives him the stutter, and he spits the beer <laughs> everywhere. Very much like that, that kind of moment, you know. So I, 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 I liked it a lot. Yeah, when he realizes, like, <laughs> and he's got his mouth full still. And, just, poof, and he spits it everywhere. I love it. I great, love it. Great moment. Uh, all right, if there's nothing else much to say about the match, I'm pretty well, much... we'll have stuff to say in regards yeah. to, the sh- to the show I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining once we start discussing Raw, because a Let's... lot of shit happened on Raw. Let's do it now. I feel like Raw was way more newsworthy than Elimination Chamber. Agreed. Triple H starts out announcing all these NXT guys coming in. I don't know if they're officially getting call-ups. But they certainly announced them coming on to the show for the night. So this is one thing I wanted to say. Right, I'm glad we you brought this up. Yeah, I I feel like they should have made it more clear that these were call ups. Yeah, it was not clear to me, and I was watching. And and it Ricochet. wasn't clear to most people that I that I talked to, like friends yeah. of mine or whatever. But then you know, on uh, WWE social channels, like they did say, you know, Triple H introduces WWE's newest superstars. They, their profile, oh. yeah, their profiles were moved. To the main roster oh. page of WWE.com. Like, there's still 205 Live guys there, mm-hmm. but there's not NXT people there. So right. they were moved to, like, the main roster area. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, that was not evident. Not evident at all. How it was presented. And, and then, you know, furthermore, today we put up a story just before, while you were recording, okay. uh, another show. Uh, one of the million shows that Roka does here. All right, all right. But uh, I think it was the sports one, right? You were the soccer thing. I'm trying to stay employed, Ryan. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, that they're teasing now that there's going to be a special announcement on NXT this Ooh. week. So well, they didn't it say would vacate the they titles. They literally just didn't say anything else. It literally just said, "Yeah, special announcement." That's all we know. W.com. That's all we know. <laughs> uh, and that you know, could the you know wh- what's going to be you know what's the big thing for the future of the NXT of the of the yeah. WWE's third brand or whatever. So the speculation is going to go for you know a day or two now. Champa and. Gargano. Gargano can't come up as a tag team, man. They got to come up separately. Well, it's too late now. We're gonna get. We'll get to that match right, or whatever. Right. But, but, but I will say that that was really the, okay. Because we saw I, Ricochet, Alistair Black, Gargano, and Ciampa. How okay. do you feel about people being introduced as a in just like a here's this person kind of way and. and 
so and so is going to read their stats almost like a UFC fighter. Yeah, I don't like it more so than a story. That I like when they them. show up and people don't expect them to show up, and they're part. And then you realize, oh, they're they've been called up and they're part of a storyline now. Right? Like that would have worked better. I don't understand the announcing of this thing to make it a big deal. I don't know what the logic is behind it because it feels like you said, yeah, very much the UFC. And you take away, you give them, sure, you kiss their asses and you give them respect and adora- and maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's also an AEW thing. They're like, well, we want to make sure you feel. Wanted by us, and we're gonna do these packages to present you here, but rather than just slide you into a storyline. Well, the whole but show felt very NXT like as a whole. The whole show thoroughly agree. felt very NXT like. And I wonder if this is maybe the change they've been talking about is Triple H taking more of a hands on approach after Elimination Chamber, heading into WrestleMania to turn Raw into a little bit more of an NXT vibe show. Which is weird because it's like WrestleMania is right around the corner. It is. Like, I remember as a child, I, and I could be wrong, but. Correct, and maybe you remember better than me, but like, and so correct me if I'm wrong, but like, yeah. did it when WWF bought or WWE bought WCW and they started the invasion? Yes. Wasn't it like right before WrestleMania? Mm. And then it kind of like, it was like too many things going on on the road to WrestleMania, so then it didn't, the invasion angle didn't really pick up until after I, WrestleMania. I feel like it was Royal, right around Royal Rumble time. Right? Yeah. So and it then be like it moved the, in on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, to me, that invasion, that was all messed up because they put Stone Cold in charge of it. Now, I get the, fair. I get the what stuff, and it was great that we got that out of it. But why would you put a WWE stalwart in charge yeah, of it? Yeah, so it started in March. Yeah. So that is like right before WrestleMania. Exactly. So, and, and if I recall, it was like very. It, it, it was clumsy. And it messed with me- WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. It yep. messed with the the debut of the, just the yep. nation stuff in general. Yep. Um, it was just kind of thrown out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about this. It kind of felt like almost like a panic button, in my opinion, yep. where it was like, you know, I feel like Aleister Black, man, those. NXT vignettes they did for him were dope when he came to NXT. Yeah. You do those on the main roster, people are like, what's that? That's cool. Yeah. You know, like that would have gotten people into it. You know, yeah. the DIY has such a nuanced story that's like two years long. I feel like weird just like bringing them up and like no one there knows what this actual long story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should say nobody. Right. But the majority of people don't know what this this storyline yeah. is between the two of them. Yeah. Um, these are brand new talents to them, having no idea that they've been in a two year long right. storyline. No matter how much that's, you reference it, no one's going to go back and watch two NXT, years. Yeah, right, right. Not, not, the majority of them aren't watching yep. NXT. The casual viewers, yep. you know. So you know, and, and and same for Ricochet. Like you know, I get it. Like they help put them over a little by saying this, and I do think. That they serve these guys well much quicker than the other NXT call ups. Yes. By instantly putting them into things. And having them not lose. And having them not lose. That was like very <laughs> brain, brain, brain <laughs> shocking, I know. But that but I yeah. think that that really was it made a difference. Yep. You know, you have them you, you know, EC three has just been lost since they brought up the main so roster. I, I forgot it was up. You know? It's just it's I actually felt bad for EC three yeah. last night when yeah. I was watching that, going like they had him win, lose, and then now he's just not even on the show mm-hmm. for all these other NXT guys who were brought ahead, who are now being brought. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm the same way that I like. I feel like it's very lazy just to be like, "Here's all these new people," you know. Where is the room? What? Ryan, where is the room? What do you mean for these people? Where That's is the totally. room? Totally. That's what I was thinking too. Like I, yeah. when I was watching last night, I was thinking, "Great, I love Ricochet. I love Alistair Black. Yeah. I love DIY." 100% want to think they should be main roster talents who are ex- who, who are getting exposed to a bigger audience. Right. I actually think they'll help the audience. To, I actually think there are people who could help grow the audience to, to be like, oh, who are these people? I, they're all great. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking that last night. I was like, and that's why I think because of, you know, if this had happened after WrestleMania and they'd shake some things mm-hmm. up, make it a little more even. Yeah. But, like, they're not doing that, you know. And we don't even know if these guys are only going to be on Raw. They could be just like the other call-ups that they're just being floated around yeah, yeah, until yeah. the shake-up happens. Yeah. There's a lot of people not being used. That sucks yeah. for those guys, for mm-hmm. sure, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, that's why I would prefer more storyline-driven mm-hmm. things because mm-hmm. I love storylines. That's why I watch WWE. You right. know, I like storylines. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean – just being great wrestlers isn't necessarily like a storyline, right? Me. You right, know, right. like I get it. We're watching wrestling, but I like a little bit more. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I didn't love to be like, "Here's these guys," and right. not necessarily it being because everyone was confused on whether it was a call up. So yeah. that those were my initial gripes with it. But 
uh, as we'll discuss. Like, I did like the way they were all used throughout the show, though. I uh, thoroughly agree. Thoroughly agree with that. Before we jump into that, we had a tables match with Strowman and Corbin. That was, I, I don't know what that was. Just a waste of time, I guess. <laughs> it Corbin, was, right? Yeah, waste of time. Strowman got the win. Who cares? Strowman didn't get the win the pay-per-view, so why does he get the win now on the tables? It makes no sense. And it was it just does like, nothing. And, and, and like I said earlier, like I hate when they just repeat. When it's like, mm-hmm. what are we going to do on the show? I don't know. Let's just do these other two matches that we had on the pay-per-view. Man, like I watched a four-hour pay-per-view last yeah, yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Don't just lazily give me the same match that didn't need a rematch. And Why didn't Ruby deserve a re- rematch against Ronda when she lost in two seconds? And, this, and that's the thing. I I'm not. I, I, I held off talking about the Ronda Ruby Riot match until we get to the match in Raw okay, as okay. a comparison. Okay. But you make a great point, Ryan. Yeah. We're going to get to it in in a little bit. You had uh, you had uh, Strowman confront Heyman on the ramp there, choke him, all this kind of jazz. Heyman came out, did one of his classic promos, then played that weird clip piece as if we all don't know what the hell Lesnar has been doing for the last few years. I do always think that's funny when they feel like they they need to. It's filling time. Remind people. Of someone we're very familiar yeah, with, yeah, yeah. like that time could have been given to another Mojo video, Absolutely. or or, or do, a package on literally anyone. Yeah, the NX, like like Alistair Black video package, something instead. Like I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like I I felt very much the same way when I was watching. That. I was like. We all know what Brock Lesnar has been doing. Exactly. And anyone who doesn't, you don't really need to explain the history of Brock Lesnar right. to them, I yeah. don't think. And so, yes, it very much felt like wasting time. Yeah, I was just sitting there watching this going, yeah, well, I've seen all this. This does nothing to hype me up for any kind of WrestleMania No, match. and I, lo- I usually love Paul Heyman promos. Yes, agreed. You know, and I was just kind of like sitting there thinking like, oh, this is really wasted. This is really wasted time. Yeah. This is just like filler, yeah. 100% filler. Agreed. And not even that cool of filler. Yeah, th- that's the thing. Yeah. All right, let's get to some really good stuff. And that's Ricochet teaming up with Finn Balor against Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush. And when we last left Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush, it looked like a breakup was on because he was mad about using the, losing the IC title to Finn Balor. I like the title around Balor's waist. I think he needed it more yes. than Lashley. And so if you keep this rivalry going, the title probably will change hands again. And so it is what it is. But introducing Ricochet in this match, all of a sudden we have a pretty fantastic tag team in Balor and Ricochet, two high-flying guys who've both been champions and numerous stops along the way so this is fantastic yeah um i'm very glad they kind of like that the, the the teased break of a leo and yeah. lashley didn't happen yeah uh i very much think that leo is one of the best things to happen to lashley in mm-hmm. wwe he's made him much more uh, uh of a just give him much more of a star presence yes, i think you agreed. know he helps build the character of bobby lashley very much mm-hmm. um same for like the small and big guy it's like a fun visual uh, and and Leo's so good on the mic that he's just really helped everything involving mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley. So I'm glad they kind of seemingly reversed course on that. Yeah. Um, unless maybe like he's gonna have a face turn eventually at WrestleMania after losing. I don't know. I hope they don't go that route. Yeah. I hope that they keep them together. And it was just like a Bobby was supposed to just kind of like further make you dislike Bobby that he beat up Leo or yeah, something like yeah. that. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But. Um, I do think the title going on B- Balor makes the most sense. Yep. I think that you know now that Seth Rollins is kind of like firmly planted in the main event scene again, I think that you could do what you could do with Finn what Seth Rollins did with the Intercontinental yep. Championship and show that like he can have great matches with anyone and he can kind of like be that match on Raw that that fills a lot of time that's still entertaining to watch. Yep. Like he can be that. I think so. Yeah. Um, I think it was a good call to put the title on him. Um, I'd like to see him hold it, have a good little run with the Intercontinental title. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree with you. I think that putting Finn with with Ricochet was very smart. Mm-hmm. They've had, sim- like you said, similar career trajectories. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's funny. I remember hearing, you know, back when when Ricochet wanted to go to WWE when he wasn't there yet. Like, I remember hearing that he didn't want to – Go in with the cruiserweights. Yeah. Like he didn't want to be part of two hundred five live or or the cruiserweight classic. That he wanted to have a similar uh, path as Finn Balor. That he wanted to go to NXT, be a champion in NXT, and then get brought up. And I thought it was funny that you know I remember hearing that specific example that he wanted to have a similar path as Finn Balor. Yeah. So I thought it was funny that his first match on Raw was with Finn Balor. <laughs> I, I was cracking up about that. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I think that. Pairing them together was great because they they are similar in terms of like their their careers, but Man. very different wrestlers. Like uh, Ricochet is um, such a uh, unique performer. He's dynamic. Yeah, he yeah. really is. Like he's something you can't take your eyes off of right. when you're watching him in the ring. Right. He's flying around, but it's crisp, and he's still mm-hmm. smooth with everything. And I think that you know. I also think you know having him you know paired with like the other good looking ab dude yeah, on the yeah, show yeah. makes sense. You know, <laughs> to be honest with you, 
I never really thought about it, but I'd like to see them as a team at this point. Like, I was like, That's you what know, I'm I kind of like these two yeah. as a team. Yeah, you know, I'm into it. Yeah, um, yeah, brothers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, uh, I I think it was good debut all around yeah. for 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 Ricochet. Um, I think the six thirty is if you've never if it's your first time seeing him do the six thirty, you're like, whoa, what the hell yeah. did that guy just do? Yeah. Um, you know, my dad is someone who I talk about being uh, very much, who, in my opinion, uh, represents the casual viewer, mm-hmm. and he texted me right after that match, just like, whoa, Ricochet is badass, yeah. and I was like, yo, yeah, Ricochet is awesome, you know, and he was like, oh, he reminds me of like The Rock or whatever and I was like Ricochet would love to hear that you know <laughs> like uh, but I mean I, I think he's talking about the post-match yeah, promo yeah, yeah, not, yeah. not his ring uh, right. not the way he Expertise. wrestles obviously yeah. but I think that he said his like likability basically yeah. on the mic afterwards when they did the thing with him and Finn Balor uh, so uh, yeah I think all around uh, probably the most successful of all the debuts on this show yeah. like where I think that people watching were like whoa if you didn't know who that guy was you were like whoa I gotta keep my eye out for that guy. Yeah, good looking, fit, crazy moves, unique style. Like man, I yeah, I feel like Ricochet has been set up for 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 success. He fits seamlessly into the situation. Absolutely, and that's what you want. Yes, and so I like that watching him. Um, and I would say this uh, overall, Lashley uh, played off him well. And Absolutely, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, and Lashley really played well off Ricochet's style. Absolutely, and that was fun to watch. For me to see what Lashley can do, because it's not just obviously, and people who know this, who watch wrestling, know it's not just about the person who can execute the move. It's the person can you sell the move, and Lashley surely sold sold the moves throughout that match. And I was I was I was actually happy for him. I was like, see, he can do this. You got to pay him with the right people. Absolutely. He can be great. I actually felt like they were they're more they're testing the waters more on Lashley and Leo as a team too. That makes sense. I kind of like that. I feel like Lashley and Leo could be a good team in the mm-hmm. tag team division too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so all around pluses for me on this cool. segment. Um, you know, I saw a lot of people talking about the the quiet crowd yeah. during this show. Yeah, a lot of people talking And come on, like, what do you guys expect? <laughs> like, th- they introduced people that yeah, DC they will probably know. haven't heard of. There you go. That don't watch our yep. next TV. They're in, where were they, Lafayette or something like that? In Louisiana, yeah. Well, like, I'm not saying, you know, like, clearly they were an NXT crowd, you yeah. know? Like, so they're not going to know who these people are. They're going to be a little quiet watching it. Yeah. Um, I think that they were all impressed by the end. But, yeah, I mean, it was it, it was definitely a quiet crowd. Yeah, I, w- I was uh, I noticed that as well. And, but I uh, wasn't, like, as turned off by but it. But they didn't as turn as on the rest. See, that's no, the thing. No, yeah, totally. If they're quiet and turn... That's a whole nother ballgame. Agreed. Like at uh, Elimination Chamber where they were chanting for Becky all through that Ronda Charlotte segment until Becky showed up. Yes. That's a crowd turning on you. And that's a dangerous crowd. So th- I was actually worried for a while until Becky showed up. I'm like, this is bad. This is bad. And <laughs> when it turned, I'm like, and when she showed up, I'm like, okay, this all makes sense. I'm just glad they didn't start chanting CM Punk or something like that yeah. during one of the calls because I would have been furious. Those, they still show up every once in a while. <laughs> you do hear them. All right, Lucha House Party took on uh, Ryan's favorite team, uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. And uh, this was a fun little back and forth. They ended up losing anyway. I guess we're still fighting this, still going with the storyline. It's somehow, somewhere down the road, either they're going to break up or get that first victory. Probably at WrestleMania, as you're hinting I at. I hope. So I would imagine so. I wouldn't surprise, although. If Lucha House Party makes it to WrestleMania, shout out to those guys. <laughs> Seriously. Um, <laughs> I almost hope that it turns into a heel turn for them now. I was like starting to think about oh. it when I was watching last night, and I was thinking, I like that. What if they turn heel because they're like pissed that they've been losers this whole time? Yeah. And, I know they have a podcast, so maybe they don't want to, and they make merch money or whatever on Zach, but like, I feel like. Oh, come on, man. It's the business. That's how I feel. It's the business. You can't be, oh, my money, my merch, my well, fucking pocket. No, it's a business. Well, but you that is the business, though, making money. Yeah, sure, but he, <laughs> but establish yourself as a heel and then eventually coming back into being a face. That's what The Rock did. And to me, that's always the greatest example. The gr- And Flair, too. Flair was a terrible. Awful, evil, despicable heel, and it was great to watch. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, maybe you don't push them up, but you you get more longevity if you can make both sides of the coin work. I mean, he and, Cena was a heel when he first started and rolled in the face. And if I recall, like, they were heels when they won the tag yeah, team titles, yeah. the Major Bros. Yeah, the so Major Bros. I feel like they might. I, they I don't know. Go do that. I can see them going that direction with it. Yeah. I don't know, um, but I think that would be cool. Uh, I agree. But I. I Maybe others aren't, but I am intrigued in the storyline. I know you are. I, I want to know where it's going. Okay. <laughs> Heavy Machinery came out, did their thing, which I enjoyed. Oh. And then Lacey Evans came out, walked down the ramp, came back. Then the Heavy Machinery guys walked down. Then they did their uh, uh, Bushwhackers, Bushwhackers thing. thing. And then you're like, well, what? Is this now? Is she now a valet now for well, these guys? Well, it more so feels like they're doing the Eva Marie, Emelina, uh, like, oh. 
thing where it's like, Lacey Evans is going to debut soon. You know, like that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Although, yeah. just give her a microphone and let her. I think it's so stupid that they're not explaining that that's what she's doing. Yeah. Like, it looks like it's very dumb. Even the announcers aren't explaining it well. No, like, nobody's explaining it well. Yeah. When all they would have to do is put a microphone in her hand and she's like, yeah. gets halfway down and goes like, oh no, too many nasties here. And turns <laughs> around. That's all you'd have to do. Like, I, I don't understand why they're not trying to explain why she's just yeah. walking out and then walking around, uh, walking away. It makes no sense. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, so on the pay-per-view was stupid, on, on this show. Yeah, I also like the promo from Heavy Machinery. Yeah. I was like, oh, good promo. T- yeah. Tucky getting some promo time. I like it. Getting yeah. Tucker over a little bit since everyone's been so otis out. out. Um, and then, yeah, the Lacey Evans thing was just like, what is happening? Yeah, what's the point? What is the point of this? Like, I just I just didn't get it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it on the pay-per-view. On the pay-per-view, I thought they were wasting time. Yeah. On the pay-per-view, I thought maybe, like, because the, sh- the, the show was going short. It was so it was Because it ended, like, a half hour short, the it show. Did, it did. I thought maybe they were like, hey, just go walk out there real fast, and mm-hmm. we'll play it off. And I don't know if that's the case, but now it seems like they're going with it. So I don't yeah. know. I don't like it. It was clumsy. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know. Was And you talk about EC3 get lost. She's getting screen time and still getting lost. Totally. That's almost even worse. Totally. Yeah. All right. The Revival takes on Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. This was a fun, fun match. Yeah. Ricochet better debut. This was a fun match. Though. Absolutely. Really good. Both of these guys, you remember their rivalry, you know, which they alluded to in that back and forth segment with them and uh, uh, Chad Gable and uh, uh, Bobby Roode there. So the back and forth was a lot of fun in this ring. And look, I, I love DIY. I always did. The breakup was great. Yes, did we get too many Champa Gargano matches? Yes, but seeing them back together is worth it. I mean, this is an interesting situation. They've never called up the North American champion and the NXT champion at the same time. So do you vacate both those titles, or you know, and push them back down there? This is an interesting. Uh, and th- this is a fascinating move by them. Um, so okay, I first before all that, yeah, the. Backstage thing. Yeah. The DIY Bobby Roode and Chad Gable uh, revival thing. Yeah. You know, between that, this match, Heavy Machinery, uh, Bobby Lashley and Leo and possibly Finn yeah. and Ricochet, to me it felt like very much like they were trying to establish, hey, we've got a we've got dope tag teams here yep. too. Yep. Or could. Yeah. With the with the Ricochet uh Finn Ballard thing. Yeah. Uh so that's why when I wrote that tweet last night, I didn't think it was crazy. Like, AEW did just, like, two weeks ago say they're going to have the top tag team division. You know, then, you know, a few weeks before that, the Revival said that they were leaving because there was no respect for the tag team division. You know, the Usos aren't re-signing instantly. Um, these are all factors, in my opinion, of the fact that the AEW is influencing some of the decisions being made in WWE, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. It's my opinion, yeah. you know. Um, but... That backstage segment I thought was really interesting. I thought that, like, you know, it was cool seeing, like, actual segments with tag teams. Like, we don't right. normally get, like, serious kind yeah. of backstage tag team segments like that. So yeah. I, I liked it. I was into it. Um, the match itself, so solid. Like you said, it reminded us of DIY. Um, my only – I'm just, like, split on it because, you know, yes, for a call-up, it was great. Like – for the people who, like my dad, who are not familiar with anything that Johnny Gargano and Ciampa yeah, have done, yeah, the yeah. entire storyline or anything, uh, for those types, I think that it was impressive to them. They were doing dope moves, great tag match, high fly, you know, not a high fly, um, a high pace style. Mm-hmm. Um, the NXT indie style was very evident in their great match. Great bumps uh, all around. Yes, yeah. not like your typical tag match that right. you see on on Raw and SmackDown. I think, right, my opinion. Um, but I think that. For the the NXT loyalist, it was a little confusing to have them teaming together. Yeah, you know, I think that it was, it was only alluded to in that min, uh, halftime heat show, and then wasn't on NXT. Wasn't the most wasn't one of the most recent NXTs where Gargano like basically told Ciampa like, no, oh, right. I don't need you. Yeah, yeah. Like I the the whole standing on the stage thing together was only because I wanted to show you that like I'm just I'm like on the same level as you. Yeah. So it, it did they. They weren't necessarily back on the same page. So to see them back on the same page was sort of weird. Yeah. Um, but I also realized that you have to explain to the casual viewer that these guys, in order to get that storyline over the main roster, you have to start them as a tag team too. Yeah. So I get that too. So I, I don't know. I, 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 I was I was split on it because okay. I love the match, but the 
I don't know. The, the okay. bringing up your two champions yeah. was 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 confusing. Yeah, it was very confusing. I think. Yeah, and uh, then and then having the, your tag team champions lose to lose them to them one week after winning it was a little confusing. It's a little confusing. So, but so but. Good but match also, overall. Good match overall. And it does get people excited. You're like, what's, it does. what's going on? Yeah. What's happening? And so if, I get that too. Yeah. And if anybody deserves a, a, the correct push, it's Gargano and Ciampa. Agreed. Right? Because we've been saying, how are they going to bring up Johnny? Are they going to mess this up? Uh, how are they going to bring up Velveteen Dream? Ciampa, I didn't even think they were considering bringing up. Well, I just really, so, you, that has been the question yeah. of like, you know, can are they going to mess this up on the main roster? And that's why I think. On the very first one of them being like friends again, yeah. I was like, are they just gonna make them a tag team and just forget about this like two year history they've right, had right. because they have good chemistry and match together? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna reserve judgment, obviously, yeah. but like, uh, there was some, you know, uh, thoughts I had on those are the thoughts I had. On. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sasha Banks and Bailey, uh, they had, uh, they came out and talked about winning the tag team champions, the first ever women's tag team champions. Naya and Tamina came out, gave them the heel rub and all that kind of jazz. Naya's uh, mirror growing on me too. Yeah, I agree. She Naya's Tamina making me laugh say now. A word. Naya's great. Yeah, Naya's been like really owning it yep. and making me laugh. I was laughing in the segment. Uh, what did you think about them saying that they're going to defend the titles um, in NXT on SmackDown and uh, you know past legends or? Whatever? I think it's fun lip service. And I don't know if they're really going to do that and defend the NXT. Because the last thing Sasha and Bailey need, and especially Sasha, who's prone to injury a lot, <laughs> is to fight more matches <laughs> into other places and other rings and other towns. Like, that to me is a dangerous situation. But I like that they say they're fighting champions. Because obviously, this is all scripted. So WWE can put them where they want to put them. But I like that the, the, the vibe is that. We're fighting champions. We'll fight anywhere. Defend this thing anywhere against anyone. There, were, there was already talk on on Twitter between Bailey and uh, uh, um, uh, Candice. Yep. And Candice bringing up uh, the... Casey. Li- yeah, Casey, the ninja lady. And then... The ninja lady. The ninja warrior lady. And then uh, uh, you got to, you had to, uh, Trish Stratus give him some rub and they were like, we'll get a partner, we'll face you at WrestleMania. There's Lita, Lita. illusions. Yeah, Lita illusions. So there's all kinds of things to play around with. Uh, so I like the idea that they're willing to fight anybody anywhere. I really doubt the WWE will have them fight consistently anywhere and anywhere. I think, th- I, you know, I, I saw that there's, I think it's this week or next week there's an NXT, th- I think it's this week, there's an NXT TV taping. Oh, So right. I feel like it might be a newsworthy NXT TV taping. I feel like we might, f- I feel like we might see Ciampa lose the NXT title yeah. in some fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I f- I'm hoping that Bailey and Sasha show back up to NXT Ooh. and defend the tag titles against someone. That'd be a cool thing yeah, for NXT. I'm down with that. Get some viewers on the NXT, get some eyes on the mm-hmm. NXT brand. Clearly, they're trying to show that the NXT is also a third brand and it's it's just powerful yeah. or whatever. So um, I feel like that'd be kind of fun, like a Sky Pirates, mm-hmm. you know, Kyrie. Oh, yeah, Kyrie Sane and, 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 yeah. and uh, Io. So yeah. Io um, versus Boston Hug Connections. Yeah. So I feel like that'd be kind of cool. Um, also, spoiler. NXT spoiler alert here because it already happened at the last taping. No. But to answer one of the questions you had, just fast forward like a minute, people, if you don't want NXT TV taping spoilers. Fast forward a minute. Uh, Gargano lost the NXT Two? North American title at the last taping at the end of it to Velveteen Dream. Hello. I guess they filmed multiple. I guess they filmed like nice. a second finish just to confuse people. Dream. But but. Yeah. Dream is the new NXT North American champion, I believe. So that already solves that problem. Good. It just hadn't happened on TV yet, which is why he was holding the title or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, People forget he's young. Velveteen's still young. Oh, yeah, he yeah, can, yeah. He, he can stay down there a little bit longer than roll up in, in his time. And Matt Riddle can easily take the place of champion, oh, yeah. and there's a plethora of people beneath him that they can still be just fine on Adam the NXT Cole, program. Adam Cole, Yeah, Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle would be dope for a takeover. Yep. Um, that'd be a good takeover, like to find the new champion or whatever. I'd be into that. Uh, so yeah, yeah uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, I was yeah. into all of it. I just yeah, lots of thoughts on it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I enjoyed that as well, and, and we'll see oh, going oh, forward. Sorry, but, I, but also, I do think they're gonna keep defending the tag titles elsewhere. Okay, the Sasha Bailey. When they show up at NXT UK, then I'll know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll know it's true. <laughs> then I'm down. <laughs> Um, Drew McIntyre versus Dean Ambrose. I don't think anything. Do you want to say anything about I this? I just it, the only thing I'll say stuff. is necessary, not necessarily the match, but um, I hate it that I loved the backstage thing. Oh yeah, with Seth and Dean. Yeah, I've been so confused to what they're doing and the fact that they're just gonna play it up as Dean's crazy. Dean's crazy, and he just doesn't remember any of that, and that he's just actually a lunatic. 
I kind of love it. It works. It kind of works. If anyone can pull it off, it's Dean Ambrose. Because yeah. that was so funny when he was standing there and he was doing his thing and he was like, can I help you with something? <laughs> it's like, where, yeah, where were you? You know? That cr- cracked me up. But I, I honestly, I was laughing so hard. I was like, wait, are they just going to pretend like none yeah. of that happened? All of us have Months friends. of television didn't happen. All of us have had friends like that. <laughs> We've had that fight, and you're like, I thought we were done being friends. What are you talking about? It's just a fight. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> That's like oh. one of my best friends. We haven't talked for years, but we'll do that. Yeah. We'll like, he hates confrontation, so he'll just stop talking to me for like a few years, and then he'll just sh- show up out of nowhere as <laughs> if up, like dude? nothing happened, and I'm like, hey, and I'll just, at that point, I just, just forget it. it. I just roll with it. It's yeah. been long enough. Yeah. It's been a few years, though, on this one. This last one. Okay. <laughs> Elias took on Alistair Black. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan they put him against Elias. Me neither. I okay, thought right. Alistair should have had way higher competition, at least established. Nothing is Elias. Elias is good wrestler, whatever, but higher of note and notoriety on the show. I felt, should have been someone like that. I felt the exact yeah. same way. Yeah. I... I did not and look. I think Elias is a great talent, sure. but I very much feel like he's like the whipping boy. You know, yeah. like he's not yeah. like top talent guy there. Over. He's putting everyone over. Yeah. He's great for what he is at this point. Um, because of this whole NXT takeover is raw vibe. Yeah. Um, I thought for sure, like, like we're gonna talk about, it, but that Ronda match should not have ended the show. Yeah. The Ronda match. Look at. It was it was a rematch of a match that took two seconds in the pay per view. Yep. So my interest in it was at an all time low. Yeah. Like all time low, and I thought if they were like I thought they were like slowly injecting these things. Ricochet is like the this great high flyer we've got in NXT. Uh, DIY is this great tag team and champions that we have in NXT. But now former champion guy who could be. Huge, huge main eventer in WWE. You know, they really could have driven that home mm-hmm. by like having him do something big and like putting him against a main eventer. Like yeah. a big and I'm I'm blanking as to who they really could have done that with right now. I mean Dean Ambrose is the person that comes to mind. Like Rollins. a win over Dean Ambrose. Well, Rollins, I think, is a little is dealing with a little bit of an injury right now. And you don't want to oh, have Rollins I lose before he's on the road to rest, you know, before he's gonna face Brock. Yeah, I guess so. So I was trying to think of like someone else. Honestly, haven't beat Braun. Yeah. You know, or even McIntyre. Or even I was, uh, McIntyre is like is, they're, they're, is, is they're, in the Elias camp. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, I guess no, Braun. I was saying in the Elias camp. I okay. feel like Drew Mac. I feel like Drew McIntyre versus um, versus Elias? Alistair Black might be the WrestleMania match we get. Oh, and so I don't think that that's why okay. I said that. Right. Um, and right. also Drew McIntyre is being pushed really well right now. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think you'd want to like stop that with a loss to Alistair Black. Yeah, but he lost to Ambrose. No, he beat Ambrose last uh, night. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, he beat Ambrose last yeah, yeah, night, like, yeah, yeah. very fast. Yeah, yeah. That was why I said almost Ambrose. Oh, if no, you had let Alistair right. Black do that yeah. to Ambrose, former WWE champion, it would have been a bigger deal than Elias, yeah, I think. I confused. Okay. Um, that was why I was looking at it that way. I yeah. was like, man, I think it went over. If Dean Ambrose had come out, that is a kooky thing, and then Alistair Black came out, hit him with the, you know, yeah. Black Mass, and that, like, Huge win over a main eventer. Yeah. WWE, I think, would have been a bigger deal than over Elias, and it would have mm-hmm. established that he's up there in the upper echelon already of people. That's a good point. Um, okay. So I'm with you. Yeah, I felt yeah. like Elias was such like an undersell of, yeah. of, of Alistair Black. However, uh, the match was dope. Yeah, the match was dope. The match was a good match. Yep. Like, you know, there were some good spots in there. They both, you know, they're both knee heavy guys. Yeah. So, like, I liked when uh, I think Alistair went off top rope once and Al, uh, Elias caught him with a knee to the face. Looked kind of cool. There was great spots in there. I mean, uh, I think that Alistair Black was made to look like a star last night. I just feel like it, they could have driven it home even further had it been over a bigger name than Elias. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Like even, I guess, like you could even have Lashley come out there and like I know that he's doing the fin, but he could have been complaining about losing the Intercontinental Title. And Alistair Black is I don't know. I just feel like Elias is so, so I don't know. Just feel like, you know. It had to be a heel because they're obviously making an Alistair face. Yeah. So well, Lash is a heel. Strowman, I mean, doesn't work. Yeah, I guess he, Strowman just, doesn't work. But even though it was a good suggestion, it doesn't quite 100% work. I someone. I don't know. Someone. Yeah. I would I would have liked someone. Well, it says something that we can't even think of someone. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why they're bringing people up from NXT. I guess so, yeah. Uh, let's finish this off before we get to one big discussion. Uh, Ronda Rousey versus Ruby Riot for this uh, women's uh, championship match. This was such a joke at the freaking Elimination Chamber. 
And people and, and fans were rightfully pissed that they used Ruby as a step over basically to set up the Ronda Charlotte Becky, Becky Lynch segment. There's no reason Ronda couldn't have had a full match with Riot and had that shit happen afterwards with Charlotte and Becky. In fact, it even works better because she'd been exhausted from the match and would have been susceptible susceptible to Becky's hitting with hitting her with the crutch. So giving her a full match here with the Riot, Riot Squad out of there, all you're doing is trying to promote Ronda. And, and it was frustrating because in the end, Ruby da- Ruby had some good moves. It was a good back and forth. And Ronda had a great move, swinging her face, uh, Ruby's face that up. That was cool. That was an incredible move, swinging her face up into the buckle and then putting her in the arm bar. That like reverse Alabama slam thing. Right. But in the end, the same result. So I don't know what was the point. You know, I was confused as to why they made the Ronda Ruby match so short when the pay-per-view ended 30 minutes early. Yeah. I, and look, I'll be honest with you. Considering I have to watch so much wrestling on a weekly basis, oh, right, you don't I wasn't mind. like angry that they stopped 30 minutes early. Right, right. But I know there are there, there are people who don't feel that way, who don't sure. have to write oops, write stuff on it while they're watching it, so it's not the same. Right. You know, they're not they're just enjoying it and taking it in and then moving on. So, yeah. um, so I I don't have a problem with it. But I did I was a little surprised they ended a half hour early yeah. when Ronda. Wrestled for two minutes. Yeah, you know, yeah. it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, uh, the match, and especially because the match wasn't bad on Raw. No, their match wasn't bad on Raw. It was at all. a good match. And Ruby can give a good match. Yeah, and that could have filled out time on the pay per view yeah. that to make it less, that, you know, less uh, wasted time at the end or less, you know, free yeah. time at the end or whatever. Um, yeah, so I, I I was a little confused by it, but I hate when they – it's just like such weird booking to me like yep. when she loses in two minutes. And she still gets another title and shot. And she gets another match. And then that match lasts a long time. Yeah. It's like, what did she do differently? Right. To what? She learned her lesson differently in, in one day? In less than 24 hours. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a whole new strategy that made her last for 10 minutes now? Like, I don't know. Right. Like, that, that bothered me. And I also felt like it was like with such a newsworthy episode – Debuts, yeah. Uh, tight, you know. There's yep. just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. Bailey and Sasha saying they're gonna switch brands with titles. Right. Like a lot of things are happening. Um, it was like a real dud of an ending. Yeah, a bit of a flaccid ending. It I was agree. just like, oh, the show's over. Yeah. Okay. When it was over, I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, this? I was too. No cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend was like, what? And I was like, well, it was just kind of like it just kind of like ended. Yeah. It's just, just kind of over. As Christian might say. <laughs> It just, ended, it just ended that way. He was like, okay, what else would we do with that? Yeah, so a uh, very blasted okay. ending to a very newsworthy show yeah, besides overall, that. Overall. Right? Yeah. So I liked the episode. Right. But there was a lot of complaints I had, too, I guess. Sorry, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I guess I can play critiques. Yeah, critiques. critiques. But I am interested. Honestly, I there are so many doors that are opened right now Yeah. that um, I am very interested to see where everything's going with it. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's do this. DX, you son of a bitch. What Let's did I talk do? this China DX stuff. Yeah, why Let's do it right now, Ryan. You and I. You're one of the ones mad about this? We're going to debate this. Okay. For a couple of minutes or four. We got the red lights. So we've got a few, five minutes probably. So I, I saw, I, so uh, it, it was announced last night that the whole DX package, and you're a mark for DX, you're a little biased, so let's, let's, let's I'm biased <laughs> for NWO, it's, it's fair, we should admit that right off the bat, uh, but DX is being inducted in the Hall of Fame, this is their kind of roundabout way of inducting China, which people have been clamoring about for a couple of years now, or a little bit longer, uh, and it split the fandom. You could say there was a lot of people who were upset about it, a lot of people who weren't upset about it and thought it was a good first step forward, including China's mom, who tweeted about that she'll be at the Hall of Fame ceremony. Blah, blah. Triple well, H. She didn't tweet it. We, put this, we posted the story on the side. Oh, sorry. You posted the story about the side. Sorry about that. And, and, and then you had Triple H, of course, doing those interviews saying this is a way of getting China into the Hall of Fame. But I'm in the camp of I thought I thought it was insulting that they didn't give it to her solo. Insulting to who? To her and to her legacy. But like... Why? Because for me, <laughs> she did a lot for women's wrestling on her own. But you don't know with, she's not going to be put in one day by herself. Well, sure, but I think that's where you go first. But and then, but, but, but you don't put but, but Ric wait Flair a in. Over but you're not angry game. about Triple H going in as a group first. You're not angry no. about X Pac going no. in as a group first. I certainly, you're not angry, angry about, about New Age Dallas, who all did big things for wrestling. Right, but nothing pioneering. Triple H and X-Pac didn't do anything pioneering? Not a damn thing. Are you out of your fucking thing. mind? Not a damn thing. What did they do that was pioneering? Win matches. Win titles. Triple what H was is pioneering? one of the biggest wrestlers of the past Oh, that's different. 20 that's, years. Yeah, but so is Flair, so those other guys. That's a different thing. He, he didn't do anything new. There have been great male wrestlers for decades in this business. So what's... And I, so don't, I, I don't China, understand the point. China's going the into the Hall of Fame. being the first woman to win the Inter- Intercontinental Championship and be a number one contender for the WWF Championship, male championship. She also participated 
participate in the King of, first woman to ever do the King of Ring tournament. And she's first going woman into the in the Royal theme. Rumble tournament. Right, but I want her in. I think she should have gone in on her own. She's a pioneering female wrestler. But to be the, honest with you, I don't really evolution. care what you think. I care about what her family thinks, and I care about what she would have th- would, uh-huh. would have thought. And I don't think for one second she would have given two shits about going in solo or going in just going in. China just wanted to go really? in. China just wanted to be accepted by the wrestling okay. community. Again. Her goal wasn't this whole documentary thing she was filming mm-hmm. had nothing to do with going in solo to the Hall of Fame. Right. It was going into the Hall of Fame. Right. So in my opinion, people that are complaining about the fact that China going solo are just looking for something to complain about because it's like you don't know. Well, no, that's the, denigrating because no, it could be you legitimate don't know, feelings. You don't know if she's gonna go in in the future. Like you don't know. And 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 to be fair, she made a porno about Vince McMahon. Not not just a porno. Yeah, she made a porno where she f- had sex with every single member of the McMahon family. Right. And and look it, I get that a lot of people have sex. A lot of people do pornos. I'm not against porn yeah. stars. I love porn stars. They're great. Right. But you can't think, man, like, Vince McMahon's a petty fucking person. Like, yeah. he had this person that literally went and did everything she could to say bad things about him. Yeah, but so and did they multiple never fixed- wrestlers, and they all get welcomed back by Vince, including Hogan and Warrior. And? That's what I'm getting But at. they're putting China in the Hall of Fame. Right, but they're putting China in as a group. And that, to me, that's, that's what but I that's think. But that's putting someone into the Hall of Fame. But look at the Are you mad that Art Anderson isn't in the Hall of Fame? What do you mean? No, you can't compare Arn to China. For God's sakes, it's two different things. What do you mean? Why can't you? Well, because Arn did, Arn, look, Arn did great stuff, but Arn didn't do anything pioneering like China did. The I horse, don't know. The Horsemen as a group, yes. Arn Anderson as an individual, no, or even as a tag team with Arn Anderson's a very influential person in wrestling that sure. definitely influenced people. Sure, you can- but the point is that you can point to accomplishment that China has done that no other woman did before. You can't point to anything Arn did that no other man did X-Pac. before. Yeah, same thing. X Pac was one of the first like small guys in a big guy's world that came in and was like an indie darling that showed mm-hmm. that small guys. Without X Pac, yeah. there would have been no Eddie Guerrero. There would have been none of those smaller guys that came up in WWE okay. because he was like a hugely influential person that was like an indie darling. You can't say that it, he was part of NWO. He was part of DX. Right. He was part of like. I'm he never going to denigrate X Pac. He was multiple time champion, multiple different times, right. cha- multiple different champions of yeah. different things. You can't say that X Pac isn't influential. Okay. Like you can't Fair. say that. That Xbox shouldn't go in by himself. Of course, he should go in by himself. That's a good it's argument. The, and Triple H has not only been a champion that was largely, that was hugely influential right. to generations of people, but then he went on behind the scenes after the fact to help start. The, yeah, but this thing where it's like the future of wrestling. So you can't. He was say that wrestlers in the business working. The, Destiny did that. Start, Rick did you, that. Triple H was the start of the thing Triple that H started the future of WWE. He, you can't say that Triple H isn't someone that doesn't have an accolades deserve to go in by himself. Of, of course he does. I didn't say that. He you didn't. Did. I didn't say he doesn't deserve to go in by himself. But I didn't course, say that. But, but, but they I'm all deserve China, to go in by themselves. So I'm saying China is a separate issue. Yeah, you can make a case for all of them to go in by themselves. Fine. But I think China is the more egregious case because of how things went down. But because of all the back, <laughs> background stuff. And you that, say egregious over something that you don't know isn't going to happen. Triple H even said in an interview with ESPN yeah. mm-hmm. that he knows that China should be in there by herself. Right. And that he hopes to make it happen. So, like, it's not like they're what not. What does that mean, though, Ryan? I hope to make it happen. Because they. You're they, the fucking son in law of the boss. What do you hope to make happen? If this is a, the, an, an ex boyfriend who left her with the Stephanie stuff, there's all that stuff going on in the background, too, that, that looks. Uh, I'm talking about optics. The optics of it was a stupid decision. In my opinion, the optics of it, the year of the woman, Becky Lynch, the man, Ronda Rousey, evolution, women's well, revolution. Dead. She is. A pioneer, even Beth Phoenix yeah, tweeted can't, about like, build her saying the whole thing around she China, should be on dead. her own. She should be in on her own. Even Beth Phoenix, who are who is influenced. I'm saying we, female wrestlers are coming out saying <laughs> that they want her to go, that should have gone in by herself. I didn't see one person that said that. Beth you, Phoenix did. She did not say that. She tweeted that. She, she said. did not say that China should have gone in by herself. You are mistaken. She said she was happy that China was going in. Justice for I didn't China. see one person that said China should go in by herself. That was actually anyone but fans. I didn't see one person say that. What did she say? Because I retweeted it. She said, congratulations to all of Degeneration X, Degeneration X, but in particular to my biggest female influence, the ninth wonder of the world, China. Joni deserves to have her role in WWE honored for the one-of-a-kind performer and groundbreaker that she was. Thank you, China. That's essentially saying. No, it's not. not. That's saying that she's happy she's going to the Hall of Fame that she's getting honored for it. There's no one of, of importance that was mad. There's only people who think that, like, that there's some big, like, they should be happy, like, 
it was hard to even make this happen. You would think the yeah. people who are really mad at sh should be pumped that this is a, if anything, this is going to show that China's probably going to be a two timer. Like, I, and then you we'll can't, see. and you can't build also, in my opinion, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. to honor the, the, the legacy of China, yeah. in, in my opinion, you, it makes way more sense to have DX go in and have all of them come up and talk about China. And be, talk about her accomplishments and all that kind of stuff, as opposed to her mom. Wa wait, we're fast. Okay. As opposed to her mom walking up on stage, who I love, her mom's great, yeah. and her mom's walking up and saying a quick five minutes speech, saying thank you. Instead, this is gonna be a whole thing where China, or Triple H, and Shawn Michaels, and the New Age Outlaws, and Xbox, they're all gonna talk about how influential she was. No offense, I don't want four fucking guys talking about her. I want Why? female they were her wrestlers. Friends. I want female wrestlers who were influenced by they were you her friends. X-Pac was her friend yes. with that video he released to get make money off. First of all, he I didn't mean, release that. You're very one, wrong. One night in China. He didn't release that video. Who did he who, that was that was that was hacked from them. He did not do that. Right. And he was her friend. That's fair. That okay. they were her friends. Okay. okay. That's very unfair to say. Like so well, and, everyone and talks about how she was mistreated much, after she left the business. But I would much rather see her friend the people who she worked with alongside talking about her than Beth Phoenix who just watched her on television. That's she, the whole point of the Hall of Fame. Influenced by her and Brinks. So what? Wow. But okay. I'm just saying, like that's not how the Hall of Fame works usually. Okay. What? What? Am I wrong? Like, no, when no, the Hall I of Fame think you are. I you? think people who are influenced by when by she, Hall of Fame for Hall of, introduced them into the Hall of Fame. When have they ever done that? It's always the people who have direct influence, who were direct a direct correlation with them. It's never just some random person who not random, but it was someone who was influenced by them. It's never that. Hmm. It's always like their kid or someone they worked with okay. or someone they're very mo known for alongside. And all those people who are known for working with China. China, the most famous thing China did was being DX. I'm sorry. Like, yes, she was the first Intercontinental Champion. Yes, she but that was also when she was doing Playboy. Well, and you can't cover that whole time without talking about how she was on in well, Playboy, she was on Playboy through the WWE. Through the WWE but they don't talk about that stuff anymore. So it's like they can't it's progress. Like they, they're. It's also hard to talk about her solo run without talking about the good housekeeping match and yeah. all that kind of stuff. That doesn't shine a light on anything. This is like, look it. She was a manager, huge, big, buff female manager before that was a thing, and she helped launch the Attitude Era. She helped mm -hmm. help the WWE Agreed. become what it is. Agreed. So I don't think that's bad As to one be of like the female wrestlers who wasn't doing TNA matches or the, panty she matches. She became until a huge deal under DX as DX. Yes. that's where she was large, I, also agree. Of course, she was launched off DX. Yes, thoroughly agree with that. I'm not going to discount that. But like DX My, was around for long. The, the the time she was in DX was much longer than the time she wasn't. I know, but I'm saying to you, I just think that what she accomplished in this business deserves its own induction it does. first. Before the team induction, but what, what does but first or second matter? I think it does matter to who? But to people who are watching, it's a fake Hall of Fame that the, the oh, Vince McMahon. I don't like that correlation. It's a fake. Hall it of is. Fame. But there's yeah, not even so an actual all, Hall of Fame. All Hall of Fames are essentially no. There's actual halls. Well, right, but they're all subjective. So no, but they're all but they're all voted on by no exactly. Voted Rock and Roll on. Hall of Fame are all voted on. Yeah, by voted the on. Industry. Subjective by those people who yeah, are but this is just Vince McMahon being like, who do I like? <laughs> That's all the Hall of Fame is. It's not. Like a subjective thing that people vote on. I it's, get it. It's right. Vince McMahon's decision of what he thinks will make the best television show. So it shouldn't be made a big deal. It's just fake, and that's it. God, I mean, okay, all I, right. I, I just want to hear where you're coming from, and I respect it. And I also way, think belts are props. I don't know, okay. like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> they're television props that Vince McMahon decides who they help better his characters for. Like, fair enough. I don't know. After having won three in the showdown, it's more than a prop to me. But I get, <laughs> I get what Ryan said. All right, that's it's just a healthy back and forth. I wanted to have the discussion with you. I hear exactly where you come from, brother, and I appreciate you being willing to have the discussion. <laughs> uh, all right, you'll see. We're on two different sides of this. Maybe oh, you yeah. guys hate where I'm at, or you hate where Ryan's at. I was at. so happy. I or was so nervous when I reached out to the mom. I was like, please don't be on everyone else's side. Please don't be on everyone else's <laughs> side. And then we just said, no, I'm so excited. I'm going to be there. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Good. Like, <laughs> yeah. Either way, it's a celebration of China. Yes. And hopefully that does happen. They don't short circuit that celebration. And I'm telling you and guys, limit her. I have a very hard time believing that this ceremony is going to be like diminishing China's role. If okay. anything, they're going to. They're so. gonna pump China up during the ceremony because of the people like you okay. who are mad that it wasn't a solo thing. They're gonna try to prove you guys wrong. Be like, look it, look go. how good we did to honor China's legacy. That'd like, be great. you know, yeah. I'm always, will you know me. I'm always willing to. Oh, go, I know. You know. I was wrong. You know. So, but I just, I just, it just struck me wrong. But I get, I get all your points. Absolutely, and totally can, uh, like, uh, hear you where you're coming from. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching this. As I said at the beginning, a lot to talk about for over the last three days. Thanks everybody for watching this raw recap here on the Pro Wrestling Sheet. It's been my honor to host the show. 
Uh, Ryan, you want to tell people where uh, they can find everything? ProWrestlingSheet.com is the website, at Wrestling Sheet on social media. YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. That's where you can find the Raw recaps, SmackDown recaps. That's where you can find the, the fun video I did with Paige last week where I quizzed oh, her good stuff. on other famous fighting families. Please go watch that if you haven't watched it yet. <laughs> I wanted to get as many views as possible. Yes, so I can, do it! So I can tell WWE, like, look, look how good I did to promote one of your talents. Give me more of them to do fun videos. So please go watch that. Uh, YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. If you just want to listen to the audio of this show, it's Podcast One. Search Wrestling Sheet Radio. It's also on iTunes, Spotify, all the other major podcast platforms. And for those of you who are mad uh, <laughs> about Wrestling Sheet Radio, I, I tested a shorter version last week and was overwhelmingly met with negative uh, uh, reactions oh. to a shorter show. Um, I'm going to try this week. I don't know. I, I'm going to try other things. What's Clearly, you guys don't like the shorter shows. You know here they were talking about maybe doing shorter shows. No, no. In oh, general. Oh, I see. So I, I see. figured I'd try it to okay. see, but fans were not pumped about it. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue week. on with it. What? Once a week needs to be a longer show. So I feel. Yeah. Uh, I, so... <laughs> Um, I, I, the test was a failure, so okay. I think we'll probably go back to the regular length, and I'll, maybe I'll cut up the segments for YouTube or something. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out, but your watch. voices were all heard. <laughs> all right. There you go. Uh, follow Ryan at Ryan Zen. Follow me at The Roga Says. Thanks, everybody, for watching again and leaving your comments, everything you're going to do. I will be gone for the next eight days. It will. I will miss doing the recaps with you, brother, because I love doing This has been one of my – this has become one of my favorite things to do here at Collider. And it's I been, love it. It's fun to do it. So uh, it, uh, you guys have fun watching SmackDown Live, watching Raw. And SmackDown, I think you're gonna. You bring guys are in. sold out, right? Uh, for what? For the, the thing you're doing in the oh, UK, the show. Yeah, yeah, we're sold out. That's okay. right. Yeah, we're, I was gonna like say to promote oh, it, but yeah, it's sold absolutely. out. They can't go anywhere. We're sold so. out in London. But <laughs> if you want to come see us in Chicago, we're doing it live in Chicago. Two shows, a Thursday of the week of Star Wars Celebration. That's I think it's April 11th. We're doing two shows, 6:39:30 at Reggie's live. What's so the go, name of the show? Go, the Top Ten Show. That's right. Go. The Top Ten Show. The podcast I do with Matt Nost. The uh, you can go to Reggie'sLive.com. Get your tickets. Uh, each show is 20 bucks, two different shows, two different lists, or if you want to come to both, two for 30. So there Ooh, you go. All right, go I get like them now. And come, come, set, come get us sold out. All right, take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon, and uh, have a great rest of your week. Pro